Welcome back to Andrew Says. Very special guest today. So many different time zones at play here. I'm learning Bryce and Gray. Lewis Brackpool, how are you guys? Very well, what's man. Up, what's up, what's up? Bryce and Lewis and I were talking about how, right before we came on, about your latest music videos and how they blow up so quickly now. Um, I can't remember the last time I saw a music video or a song in any manner hit like a million views on just like a Twitter post. What made you start <laughs> posting them on Twitter? Is it because obviously you don't care about the money if you're posting it on Twitter. So did you think that you should just post it wherever you can? Uh, it's because of shadow banning. And I was like, what's a, I was talking to people like Tyson James. And I was like, what's a way around shadow banning on YouTube and things like that. And then I said, I'm going to just start posting it everywhere, including Twitter. And the first question uh, for Jada was like, you don't get paid for that, though. I said, you don't at all. But it's about, like, the message spreading. Like, how, how can you get the message to spread more? And I tested it out with God Save America. And I thought God Save America went crazy. I said, oh, snap. It got, like, 300,000 views. That's cool. Then I did Hunter Biden hacked. And he got, I got a million views. I said, oh, snap. Yeah, this is, like, lit. <laughs> Yeah, it was crazy in just a couple days, and you had another one, Liberal War World Order is one of my favorite songs. Yeah. I listen to it almost every day. Um, thank you, thank you. But what was the most recent one that charted again to number one? FBI Raid. FBI Raid. Do you ever think about how crazy it is that you're beating out Drake and Jack Harlow and all these people, and your music videos aren't on TV? Nah, it, it, it is super crazy. The, the hardest thing to figure out is how to, like, maintain it. So, like, with, with conservative rap, we'll be cool for a week or we might be cool for, like, two weeks. And after that, we just drop off. So, so the same people that be on there that, that we be above, they stay there, though. So it's hard. It's, it's, it's hard to compete with these people. I'll tell you what. Lewis, does this genre even exist in England? <laughs> of course it does. Somewhere. But the <laughs> America market is... Um, is the most booming in that in that respect, and um, I've always said that conservatism with um, with music now, um, I, I think uh, conservatism is almost the new punk, um, because what people are teaching nowadays uh, through music, through um, lots of different genres, through institutions, is that you know you shouldn't get married, you shouldn't have children, um, you should turn away from God, whereas it's now almost countercultural um to to do those things and uh it's so interesting and um yeah um big up to you uh bryson for uh for continuing doing that i think it's brilliant so yeah nice one mate thank what's, you thank you what's the process of coming up with these songs so quickly because you keep pumping them out like i mentioned and they're on twitter hunter biden hack was like i want to say within 24 hours of the story breaking and then the fbi raid as well do you have beats on hand is there a process to, you know, put a beat to the lyrics after the fact? Or how are you getting them out so quickly is what I really want to know. Uh, so sometimes I haven't done it for the last like week and a half. I got to get back to doing it. But I record a lot of songs like on live. So like the song Jesus I made with Tyson James, I recorded it live. Hunter Biden hacked, I recorded it like on live stream. And then like I like challenge myself on live to do it within an hour or 30 minutes or something like that. Um... So it, I don't know, it could take, it don't take me longer than an hour and a half to make a song, period. But I've been making songs since I was like four. So mm -hmm. it's like I already have a way, a, a way of doing it in my head. You know what I'm saying? And I know you know this, but uh, Lewis, my girlfriend's the biggest Bryce and Gray fan. It's actually insane. Like, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> um, <laughs> shirts she doesn't want to wear because she's afraid people are going to get mad at them, but she wears them anyways. <laughs> Um, she's like, oh, I've been listening to this song all week. It's just, I just love, uh, letting Bryson know about that. Cause it's, it's great. Um, that's cool. One thing I guys want to talk to you about because I saw it on Bryson's uh, feed earlier today was of course the Andrew Tate stuff. And I know Bryson's going to have a different outlook on this than I'm going to have, or than a lot of people have, but Lewis, let's go to you first. What's your immediate reaction and sort of what I've been asking people lately that I talk to is, is there this thing where just because somebody gets banned, you know, like conservatives online immediately start backing them? And do you think that 
can be a detriment sometimes, or do you think that this was appropriate? How do you feel about this whole situation? Well, um, I made it clear that um, when Andrew Tate got banned, that I don't agree with the banning completely, um, because as you know, I'm um, very, very pro freedom of speech and expression. And of course, uh, you guys probably know a little bit about the UK and how awful our speech laws are here. So it's basically uh, North Korea 2.0 here, where the police will turn up to your door, even if you post a spicy meme on Facebook, it's that bad. Um, so uh, I I back his freedom of expression, even though that I, I think there are some things that I, I disagree with. There's some things I do agree with, but that's like with everyone. And of course, Andrew Tate is this guy. He was raised in Luton, uh, moved to, I believe, uh, America and, and, and other places. And um, he's uh, he was from a very working class, poor background and then became rich. And there are some ethical questions to ask about Andrew Tate and his, his previous work life and uh, what he was doing prior to where he is now. Um, and there should be questions around that, of course. Uh, I don't believe, however, that someone should be banned um, just because people disagree with their opinions. And that's how it comes down to. Um, and unfortunately, freedom of speech and protecting freedom of speech means backing people that you don't agree with. And if you if you in, in uh, if you agree that someone should be banned just because on the basis that you disagree with what someone says on TikTok or Instagram or Twitter or any sort of platform, then you're not pro free speech. And, and that's just how just the way it goes. And you don't have to agree with them um, and you don't have to endorse them or, or you know, say say that you agree with absolutely everything that they're saying. Of course not. But um, the, the right to free speech and expression is extremely sacred. And um, and yeah, that's my thoughts. OJ Simpson's on Twitter. I think R. Kelly's still on Spotify. <clears throat> Bryson gets songs removed. You had another song removed off of where recently? Everything. Uh, <laughs> <Okay>. Pride Month. <laughs> yeah, my song Pride Month was removed everywhere. Like literally, quite literally everything. It's more so, than like, because Safe Space got banned on Spotify alone. Uh, Pride Month got banned everywhere. No exceptions. So what was your yeah, take that's... on Andrew Tate, Bryson? Um, like I said before, I think Andrew Tate needs to repent and turn to God. But outside of that, uh, the, the the conservative movement actually was split on supporting and not supporting Andrew Tate. And it was very weird to me. Now, if we're talking about supporting Andrew Tate, that's one thing. But but the conservative movement was split on supporting his or 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 or, or defending his free speech. And that's why I got very confused. Because the reason they ban Andrew Tate and how they ban Andrew Tate is worse than any other ban we have ever seen, right? Mm -hmm. Like, they ban him without getting strikes on YouTube, without mm -hmm. getting strikes on Instagram. They literally came together and banned him because some gay person did an Instagram post calling for him to be banned because they say, they say he's dangerous to young men. So, so he got banned because they feel like he's dangerous to young men, but who's not dangerous for young men is little Nas X. Is these gay kids in makeup? Is these transgender uh, teenagers? These kids are not dangerous to the youth. But Andrew Tate is. Why? Because he doesn't act gay? Because he doesn't paint his nails? Because he doesn't wear dresses? Because he's he, he he's masculine? Is that why he's a danger to young men? Like, the, it's, I'm just, bro, it is crazy. When you got women, you got women with podcasts called Kill All Men. Matter of fact, the most popular podcast, like, that's purely women, is either about being a harlot. Or it's about how you hate men. And that's that's women's success in, in 2022. Even though uh, TikTok, there's this girl called Drew something who's popular simply because she don't like men. Like she just drags on men all day. But so it just us a few things about women that in most cases are very, very true. Like, I mean, it's just reality. They're weaker than men. They're, 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 they're smaller than men. This, this is the reality of life. And he gets banned on the internet. So I, I I think this is crazy. And I think what this represents on who gonna get banned in the future, I know all my music gonna get banned within the next three years. Yeah, it, it's a it's a tough spot, and I don't agree with the the banning either. 
But these rules that everybody warned about on YouTube specifically, where they said they can ban you if they don't see you as marketable, basically. I forget the exact wording they said, but there's absolutely zero standard. And sadly, Twitter is like the only, well, not the only one. I was just going to say they were the ones of the most popular ones who are least likely to censor you in that way, even though like can't say groomer or dead name people and all that stuff. So it's sad that um, that this happens and then people are like, but what about this? And what about that guy? Because like I said, R. Kelly, O.J. Simpson, uh, the Taliban, North Korea, crap like that is all over the Internet. But you can't have this guy talking about this stuff. Now, Bryson, I want to know when we're going to get Bryson at a, at a drag thing. That's a viral video waiting to happen. So I'm actually I'm actually going to one uh, oh, September right. twenty September September twenty fourth. They're having like some drag event at a church, which is I mean pure pure blasphemous. But um, the people in Dallas, the people in Dallas, Texas, they they, they asked me to come because oh, they want to do a protest. That's good. I said be a this thing. is something. Yeah, I said this is something I protest for. If I, if I can protest for for the for the election, then I can protest. Um, I can protest. I definitely should be able to protest for a church. So I said, I'm flying out there. Right. And I, and if everybody remembers, Bryson refused to fly when there was masking rules. Um, so we got to credit him for that as well. Um, Lewis, let's swing it back to you. Another thing we've been talking about lately is this green energy stuff. And I mm. want to get to Bryson on whether or not he thinks that it's going to ramp up in America, but can you tell everybody what you're telling us earlier about how people have to shut down their businesses because the energy crisis, the energy prices is just insane over there? Yeah. Um, well, because the UK, a bit similar to the US and various other uh, European countries, they have this fanaticism about uh, <laughs> green energy and green policies, all deriving from, of course, the World Economic Forum and this idea of building back better. But what does better mean? Um, so it's it's a very worrying situation. And now what you've got in the UK, because we keep, of course, um, sending it's now billions uh, to Ukraine. Same with America, uh, same with many other countries. Uh, and we don't know where that's ending up. And um, not only this, but really pushing forward with the idea of net zero, which once again is World Economic Forum. And we have now in a situation um, post lockdowns uh, in the UK, printing billions and billions of pounds in this country has and just handing it out like coupons as if the repercussions weren't going to you know, occur in the UK. We're now in a situation where inflation and prices are so high that businesses are folding. And we were touching on a story earlier that three quarters of pubs in the UK and there are a lot of pubs in the UK. I mean, it's unbelievable the amount. Uh, three quarters of them are to shut down potentially in the coming months, and um, it's sad to watch. I'm literally I'm watching this the suicide of my own country, and it's um, well, it's 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 a slow process in the U.S., but I I think it's coming there too, and uh, I think everyone should be pretty vigilant and, and worried about what's going on because these policies. Uh, these green policies are just destroying absolutely everything. Well, I think people have a viewpoint that America is immune to at least some of the stuff that happens in the rest of the world. Australian lockdowns and camps are one thing I can think of. Bryson, you, you, do you think that that stuff's going to happen? This is basically the climate like lockdowns I think people it, were referring to, but now it's taking a little bit of different form. Do you think there's going to be these energy um mandates where you can't have your lights on and i think i saw in california they're like we're getting rid of all uh gasoline fueled cars in the next 10 years you're not going to be able to buy one they're not gonna be able to make any do you think that stuff's gonna let's let's eliminate california or like portland and seattle from the equation do you think that's going to take hold in america and people will allow that um i think so uh i don't know how soon in the future but it's obvious about how they talking. You see Pete Booty Judge. Um, <laughs> Pete, Bo Pete Booty Judge already, already telling people, like, who cares about gas prices? Just get an electric car. They, they already pushing that propaganda of, like, electric cars, pushing everything towards electric cars. Everything, you know, because of this green energy nonsense. 
And um, so I, I think the obvious next step is that. But I, I, I think we're like a few years behind of uh, other Western countries, usually with stuff like that. So we got a few years to get ourselves together. I don't it's think funny. I've heard. It's... Go ahead, Lewis. I was just going to say, I saw that California uh, recently announced they want to ban petrol and diesel as well. And uh, well, that's already happening here. Uh, they want to phase that out by 2030, the classic date. So, <laughs> you know, I think it's just a slow burner over there in America, Bryson. So, um, yeah, I, I think agree. you're right. Well, they did this thing in California where they announced last year that they could do 95 percent of their energy grid on renewable energy. So I guess wind and solar. And then it turned out that they could that meant that they could run their entire grid off of renewable energies for like five minutes in total. So technically they could. But after five minutes, it would be, I don't know, blackouts everywhere. Bryson, I don't think I've heard your opinion. I'm sure you said it on the whole Ukraine thing. Can you give us a spiel on that, on the Bryson Gray viewpoint of sending all this money to Ukraine? Oh, t- easy. Um, so th- this this is what I find crazy because why are we sending it to them? Like the first time they gave a reason why, but if you look at the most recent times and look at why they sent it to them, they just keep using the the phrasing relief, like relief from what mm-hmm. exactly? Why why do we keep sending them? Bill- I don't know how much money we sent them now, but it has to be like hundreds of billions of dollars. And so what I find crazy is we knew the Russia Ukraine conflict would happen. If we kept trying to expand NATO, we was we warned ourselves about it in 2015. Biden even talked about it way before that. Like we know how this works, and if you look at how NATO has expanded over the last 40 years, or however so, you will see it seems like to get purpose purposely closer and closer to Russia. And since Russia is not uh, an ally to NATO, then obviously they're going to view that as aggression. And this, this everything I'm saying is not new. Everybody knows this. Everybody has always known this. But now that something happened, now they're trying to just not only, you know, take our tax dollars and send them to Ukraine for no absolute reason. All the marketing coming from Ukraine, even though a few years ago, like two years ago, everybody viewed Ukraine as one of the most corrupt countries in the world. They have literal neo-Nazis there. Uh, Same-sex marriage is, Ill- is illegal there, kind of based. But it's like they, it's like they, they um, I don't know, it's like the way we're trying, this country is trying to push this Ukraine, people with Ukraine flags in their bio, even though that's out of style now, but you know, when it was in style for Libs, you know, I just found all this interesting and they use our tax dollars to fund them for what reason exactly? What are they doing with our money? That's the part I don't know. Yeah, well, I can tell you exactly fishy. what <laughs> they're doing. And that's, I don't know if you've seen the, um, the vice president, or no, vice prime minister of Ukraine posted a, a video of what Ukraine is going to look like at 2030. Um, this idea of building back better is actually um, the idea of AI courts and uh, and everything. It's the first most digitized um, country. Uh, there's no cash. There's there's nothing. Everything's digitized. Everything's everything's digital. Um, exactly like what the World Economic Forum wants. So I think that's that's where they're they're pushing it. Is is what I, I think. Know that. How well, do we find that? I'll Olivia, send you the video. Find that? Can you message oh, that yeah. to Olivia? um producer Olivia working his twitter. behind the scenes he posts it on his twitter for crying out loud it's unreal <laughs> well that's the, yeah, the crazy that. thing about it too is zelinsky has got like a pop in instagram and uh i noticed uh, last week they had to take down a post because once again one of the soldiers they promoted had uh neo well, not a neo-nazi a nazi symbol on it it was for the luftwaffe i believe the nazi air force just casually like i know when i was in the army we would just put like World War II <laughs> symbols on our stuff for no reason. Like the idea that they try to explain away, and you see this a lot in uh, Elod videos for Timcast that he does now in New York, where they have the U- pro Ukraine protesters, and they're just, they sound like the way that Democrats think um, Trump supporters feel about like white supremacists. So they have these Ukrainian support. Quarters and they say, oh, the Azov Battalion's just freedom fighters. They just love Ukraine. They're just defending it. All the people with those bad ideologies have, have left, and you're just spouting Russian propaganda. That's how, you know, Jean, what's her name? Jean-Pierre. I always forget her first name. That's how she is saying that they view Trump supporters as semi-fascist. So it, it's crazy to watch, like, the inverted logic here where 
The number one threat in the world is white supremacy, you guys. The number one threat in the United States, according to the intelligence agencies, is white supremacists. But you actually have those fighting on front lines in this war that you're supporting with hundreds of billions of dollars. Don't quote me on the number. I don't know if we're hundreds of billions yet, but I think we are. I think we're in a, at least a couple hundred a billion. We've got to stop you guys right there. YouTube, Rumble, I'm sorry, you got to go to rebelnewsplus.com. We're talking about will Bryson Gray box somebody? Has Lewis boxed somebody already? Uh, Jamie Foxx doing a Trump impression. Biden on guns. Bryson's opinion on Ukraine. All this stuff too spicy for YouTube. And we want to push you to the paywall now. Rebelnewsplus.com where you'll get all this extra content every week. We have new segments that you haven't seen anywhere else. So please go to rebelnewsplus.com. You'll get this show, you'll get Ezra Levant, and you'll get all the documentaries there. See you guys next week.